Hello everyone here. Uh, to in today's session, uh, we are going to discuss about the Riemann integration basic concepts. You can see historically uh, what integration process was. Actually, uh, nowadays what we are thinking, the integration of function is nothing but antiderivative of that functions. But uh, when we see in the history, uh, the integration comes into picture while calculating the areas of plane regions or other uh, plane geometrical areas. Uh, the Riemann, uh, the George Riemann, whose lifespan was 1826 to 1866, who is German mathematician, uh, who gave the constructive definition for this integration, which is known as the Riemann integration definitions, which is defined specially for uh, the bounded real valued functions. What he did, he just find uh, the infinite sum when each sum member tends to zero. And if that infinite sum becomes the finite one, uh, the value of that sum is known as the integration of that functions. So, initially uh, we have the function f which should be defined on closed interval a, b and should be real valued. This function has to be the bounded function. So, what do you mean by bounded function? The bounded function meaning is that we have uh, the number m and capital M real number such that the f of x for every x in the closed interval a b lies between these two numbers for every x in closed interval a comma b. So, such type of functions are called bounded function alternate definitions for the positive real number k for positive real number k your f of x mod of f of x is always less than or equal to this mod k and whatever x you take from this close into a b. So, such type of functions are called bounded and whose codomain is set of real number is called real valued function. So, whatever functions you are assuming for uh, the part, part of studying Riemann integrations, we should assume that the function is bounded and should be the real valued one. So, uh, let's, uh, let us define the basic concepts uh, in the Riemann integration is the very first is partition of closed interval a b. Partition of the closed interval a b. What do you mean by the partition of this? The name itself meaning that you are making the parts of this closed interval a b disjoint plus of the parts of the closed interval a b whose union will constitute again closed interval a b. Suppose uh, this is your closed interval a b the b should be greater than a or a is less than b. So, initial point is always represented by x0. I will take x1 point somewhere ahead to this a. You can see comparison thus x1 is greater than a. Another x2 this should be greater than x1 and so on xn minus 1 should be less than b that is xn. If you, if you want total number of points as the xn points. So, these points x0, x1 and xn minus 1 xn, these points, this set is called partition, partition of closed interval a b and the points are called partition points. So, x0, x1 and xn, these are called partition points, these are called partition points. Now, one can see we have we are making into small small parts we are making this into the small small part like this. So, this is the first segment this is the second segment we may have another x 3 third segment and distribute the nth segments. So, these are called the sub intervals in the partitions. So, Lord, let us denote this sub intervals I denote this sub interval by I 1 the first sub interval that will represent the closed interval x0 x1. Likewise, similarly I denote the second sub interval for this it will be x1 x2 this is i2. The next sub interval will be i3 and since there are n plus 1 points we must have total n sub intervals and one can see the disjoint units of all these sub interval forms your close interval ab. This closed interval a b is just union of r from 1 to n i r. So, 
this is all about the partitions this partition is also called as uh, partition has okay uh, one can see here if you add uh, one more points so, okay i will take example here suppose your interval is 1 comma 2 so in the real line i write this point as 1 this point as 2 and i have to take any point between this 1 and 2 so i will take this point as 1 added with 1 by 3 i can call it as 1 added with 1 by 3 it will be 4 by 3 next some point other point okay midpoint i will take this as uh, 3 by 2 definitely 3 by 2 is greater than 4 by 3 and another point i will take okay these are the three points only i will take so x 0 is 1 x 1 is 4 by 3 x 2 is 3 by 2 and x 3 is 2 so these are the partition points and what is the partition this x0 x1 x2 x3 is called the partition of closed interval ab somebody may add another points here we'll get different partitions and since there are infinite many points we can have infinite number of partitions for any closed interval ab so the collection of all or family of all partitions will be denoted by p of ab here it will be p of 1 comma 2 collection of all these uh, partitions will be called as p of a b so uh, let me define the next thing norm of the partitions the highest length in the sub interval whatever partitions you are given suppose uh, the length of sub interval uh, length of sub interval we have to you can calculate length of sub interval let me denote the before defining the norm of the partitions let me define what is the length of each sub interval so i'll write each and everything here so your i is close interval a b you have taken the partition as x0 equal to a x1 x2 xn minus 1 and xn so this is called as partition of closed interval a b in which x0 is a and xn is b next i am going to define the sub interval the first sub interval is i0 x1 and what is the length of i1 the length of i1 is x1 minus x0 and it will be denoted by delta 1 here and the next sub interval x2 x1 x2 and length of this sub interval i can call it as x2 minus x1 it will be the delta 2 and so on there are total n plus 1 point so i must have n sub interval there so nth sub interval is xn xn minus 1 and length of this nth sub interval is xn minus xn minus 1 and it is the delta n and when i try to sum up all these these lengths what will happen we'll see here when i try to sum up all these so this minus x1 plus x1 x2 next minus x2 xn minus 1 earlier xn values get cancelled and you get sum of all these as xn minus x0 that is b minus a that is the length of i the length of i is b minus a so indirectly we prove the length of all sub interval is nothing but uh, sum of all lengths of sub interval is nothing but b minus a one can write here this summation i from 1 to n delta i it is nothing but the length of sub length of the original interval now i have to define uh, the norm of partitions which is also called as the mesh of partitions and the norm is denoted by we have same partitions here notationally and we are going to define norm or mesh of the partitions so it will be defined like this so denoted by norm p somebody may denoted by mu of p also this capital p so what is the definition of this it is the highest length among all the sub intervals so mathematical i can write 
the maximum among all delta i i may be 1 i may be 2 which number is maximum 1 we have total uh, n sub intervals then delta 1 delta 2 delta 3 delta n among which which quantity is the maximum one that maximum quantity is known as norm of the partitions we know the definition of delta i it is xi minus xi minus 1 and i should be from 1 to n so that maximum value is called as norm of the partition or mesh of the partitions and it is denoted by the notation norm p or mu of p let me find the norm of following partitions of closed interval some example i can have and we can try many and more example for that so suppose interval is closed interval 0 1 and i write the partition of closed interval as 0 1 upon 4 1 upon 2 3 by 4 and 1 suppose this is the partitions so this is x0 point this is x1 point x2 point x3 point x4 points these are equal space so i need to find the length so what is delta 1 x1 minus x0 it should be 1 by 4 what is delta 2 1 by 2 minus 1 by 4 so it is also 1 by 4 what is delta 3 x3 minus x2 that is 3 by 4 minus 1 upon 2 so it is also 1 by 4 and next delta 4 is 1 minus 3 by 4 so it is 1 by 4 so your norm is maximum of all these your norm is maximum of all these and it is 1 by 4 so norm of this p is 1 upon 4 since they are equal space not necessarily equal space we can check uh, take by our choice so likewise we can find norm so what you learn today we have while construction construction is the definition of Riemann integrations uh, on close uh, bounded interval your function should be bounded one so i am defining the partition for the domain set that is closed interval a b we must have total n plus one point format so that we will get n sub intervals for that and then later the we are we called the set as partition and the member of that partition set are called as partition points we define uh, the sub intervals for that i1 i2 in and what is the length of each sub interval that is delta 1 delta 2 delta n whose sum is coming up to uh, the length of interval you can see what is sum of 1 by 4 1 by 4 1 by 4 it is 1 and length of this one interval is also 1 likewise uh, i request you to construct uh, such a partitions for different different interval and try to find the norm of the partitions verify the sum of all sub interval length is nothing but sum of the original interval in the next lectures, uh, we are going to discuss about the upper Darboxum, sum, uh, lower Darbox sum and how it can be applied to in Riemann integrations. Till then, I will stop here and watch this video, subscribe the channel. Thank you.